Joining us now is Dr. Tia Medley. She's a pediatrician over at MedStar Health. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. This is really exciting news. These shots now being able to be given to five and 11 year olds. I'm curious, what will this look like as parents sort of seek out this rollout for the shots for their kids? Uh, pretty similar to the current way that they get their vaccines. They can call and schedule appointments with their primary care providers to get those vaccines. Um, because of the kind of global scale of everything, my understanding is that a lot of the pharmacies that are offering them now will still continue to offer them for those kids five and up. Um, and so it'll kind of be pretty similar to what they've experienced in the past. I'm curious of your reaction when you did hear the news about this younger group being able to get shots. What, what do you make of it? What do you think? I was beyond excited. Uh -huh. I think that it's absolutely necessary and I think it helps with ensuring that they're able to continue to go to school uninterrupted because that's been the biggest impact for kids um, with everything that's been going on. So. Uh, I'm a parent. I actually have an 11 year old. He's about to turn 12. I'm, I'm wondering what are some considerations that parents need to at least think about on, as they sign up for that appointment? Anything that they should keep in mind uh, when that time comes for them? Um, just that just like with any other vaccine and just like many of the adults have been experiencing, there can be some side effects. So if um, they are, you know, probably would say kind of try to schedule it so that um, of being aware of the fact that they may need to be out of school the following day if they have significant side effects like the fever, the chills, the, the headache and things like that. Um, but other than that, not much. I mean, kids can still be given Tylenol or Motrin after they receive their vaccine to mitigate some of those side effects as well. I'll play devil's advocate here. There's some folks who may say uh, the kids, they, you know, they rarely show the symptoms. They hardly get sick and don't end up in the hospital. So why should I go ahead and get this shot? What, what would your answer be to folks who are a little apprehensive about this? So I think just looking at the news, we're seeing that with this latest wave that many more kids are, have been affected than have been previously affected. And so there are more kids that are having more symptoms when they get the vaccine, get the um, infection with COVID. But even more than that, it's it's the, the spread that is the issue, right, for kind of from a public health perspective. So making sure that they are vaccinated actually ensures that the rest of the household remains um, as well as possible as well. We spoke about this uh, show before this one, but I think it's worth reiterating. This all comes right in the middle of flu season when those shots are available uh, as well. How should parents handle uh, these two availabilities? So the vaccines can be given at the same time. So both of them can be given. I've received both of mine at the same time. So they can be given at the same time. There's no contraindication to that at all. All right. Some busy days ahead for you. That's Dr. Tia Medley yes. over at MedStar <laughs> Health. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you.